Hello everyone, back to today's third video to USA forecast for today's uh, third video. So sort of on Wednesday, having a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days across the United States. Have a look at CFSV2 uh, as well for the next four weeks. I should get on with that for you very shortly. Just say that the first video released today was the uh, UK weather forecast. Having a look at weather next two or three days in the United Kingdom. Nice, simple little forecast uh, upload at 7am every morning. So have a look at that. You have not yet uh, caught up with it. And uh, also the answer update for March uh, was released earlier today uh, as well. Please like, share and subscribe on all the videos. Thank you so much everybody uh, for doing that. Right, we're going to start off with GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's cover in Chicago today. So red lines are 30 year upper air temperature average for Chicago. We're having one final or potentially final anyway really big northerly blast coming into the Midwest and over into the east over the next two or three days. So upper air temperature is already a bit cold on average uh, across Chicago. They're going to get even colder over the next couple of days. Going down to the minus 15 at 850 HPA. So, a blast of very cold air coming out of Canada in the next two or three days. Into weekend and next week, though, we're going to see a rapid recovery in the temperature, actually becoming quite warm uh, through many parts of America, particularly like Midwest, as we go into the uh, into next week. So, it becomes significantly warmer uh, next week. Around the middle of April, we may have a bit of a drop in the temperature again. Um, nowhere near as cold as it's going to be in the next two or three days, but we might start bringing some cooler air back in uh, from the north as we get through into the middle part of April. Precipitation wise, there'll be lots of dry weather in Chicago over the next few days, although there may be some snow coming in with this uh, with this northerly blast, but but not overly uh, not over uh, overly snowy, not not huge amounts of uh, snow seemingly. Uh, reasonable amount of dry weather then into next week. If it turns more unsettled next week as it gets warmer, we start to break out some heavy rain, possibly thunderstorms, uh, through next week as the temperature begins to uh, lift up. So warmer but wetter, uh, potentially next week. Temperature anomalies from the 31st of March to the 8th of April. Uh, warmer and average from many northern and western states, although the west coast itself does actually look a little bit cooler. But generally, it's warmer in the west and it's colder in the east and in the southeast uh, as well. Uh, precipitation always vary from state to state, but overall dry of an average through many parts of America in the coming days. This is how the GFS is looking for today, then. So we begin to bring this very cold air in from Canada, again, on these northerly winds into the central states, and that very cold air will be pushing over into the Midwest uh, through the course of the day. Uh, up the east coast, though, we are drawing up quite a warm southerly wind. Now in the west, we're under a ridge of high pressure. It's quite chilly under that area of high pressure. As the upper air temperatures day showing really cold air again digging in from Canada through these central states and increasingly progressing over in towards the uh, Midwest as well. Tomorrow, uh, Midwest and the East will start to come in the firing line with this uh, very cold uh, northerly blast. So there's the upper air temperatures showing uh, like those very cold upper air temperatures spreading out across the Midwest and increasingly pushing into the East as well. There'll be a band of rain pushing into the East. That might turn to snow uh, you know, as the cold air digs in uh, behind it. And this northerly could well bring snow showers in some northern and eastern parts of America as well. Friday looking very cold uh, in the east, in the northeast as well, with this proper old northerly blast still running down the eastern side of America. Out in the west, it's starting to get a little bit warmer, though, down in the southwestern part of the states, in particular, like Arizona, the heat is starting to build up through there. As we go into the weekend, we, sh we will lose those very cold upper air temperatures. They'll begin to recede back towards Canada. Seeing through the Midwest and the East, although still quite chilly, we will see the temperature beginning to stage a recovery as we go further on uh, through this weekend. Into next week, high pressure is beginning to uh, develop through the Midwest into the East. That's not to draw up milder or warmer winds uh, from the uh, south. Out in these uh, central plain states, we're going to find, again, things becoming uh, quite warm. But in the far west and northwest, over towards the Pacific coast, we'll be a little bit cooler and more unsettled through there. We see it on the upper air temperature. So a recovering temperature clearly taking place through, mid through Midwest into the east. Heat building in the southwest, uh, spreading up through the uh, central plain states, but quite cool over on the Pacific uh, coast of America. That takes us through into the uh, middle of next week when an area of low pressure will begin to develop through those uh, central plain states. A reason being that we've got cooler air beginning to come in from the northwest into, into the northwest part of America. We've got those very warm southerly winds uh, through the central and eastern 
parts of America. That would develop an area of low pressure. It might bring heavy rain, thunderstorms through those central states and over in towards the Midwest. Eventually, uh, it may start to see some thunderstorms breaking out. Upper air temperatures, though, look quite warm, actually, through the middle part of next week across many parts of America. Uh, second half of next week, again, this low pressure will push in. We'll see heavy rain, maybe some thunderstorms with it. And we'll start to bring in some cooler air or colder air from Canada uh, once again uh, in, towards, uh, in towards the Midwest. Although nowhere near as cold as it's going to be in the next two or three days, uh, we will potentially start to see cooler or colder air digging in from the north once again. The southern states still look relatively uh, warm, however. We're up to day 10 now. Uh, winds in from the north, from the midwest and into the east. So remain quite chilly, quite cold across many of these central, uh, midwestern and eastern states. Heat beginning to build though out in the far west and southwest up the Pacific coast. As we move into the XA range with this GFS run, we just gradually see a reversion back to more typical pattern. Uh, really high pressure begins to develop through these uh, central and western states. Still a trough over in the eastern part of the states as we get up to Friday, 16th of April. Keeping things pretty cool and unsettled there but otherwise high pressure turning things increasingly dry and probably quite warm for the middle of uh, April. Uh, this is how the uh, ECM is looking the euro currently again we're digging in this very very cold northerly wind into those northern states at the moment one last potentially anyway one last really big northerly blast uh, from Canada into the Midwest uh, that's how the upper air temperatures look at, at midnight tonight and again very very cold across many of those northern and eastern states. Those very cold northern winds uh, transfer over onto the eastern side as we get through into the end of the week. This is Friday. It's looking really cold through the Midwest and over towards the East Coast as well. Same time, though, heat is building down in the Southwest, so those Southwest states will be starting to turn ever hotter. Into the weekend, we will lose those very cold upper air temperatures. That will see back to Canada. We'll start to draw something a little bit milder up from the south. Upper air temperature becoming quite hot through these uh, through these southwestern states. Anyway, the, the heat really starts to build there. Just generally turning warmer across many parts of America, actually, through weekend and into uh, next week. Through next week, an area of road pressure would develop through those central plain states and start to push in towards the uh, Midwest around the middle of the week. Could bring some heavy showers, thunderstorms with upper air temperatures looking really quite warm to actually relatively hot, really, with the upper air temperatures through the middle of next week, and usually so, uh, perhaps. Um, second half of next week, we will begin to turn things cooler again in the north and northeast with this area of low pressure moving out onto the uh, east coast. That starts bringing colder air in from Canada. Nowhere near as cold as it could Currently is, but nevertheless, there will be uh, there will be uh, a bit of a drop in the temperature in the second half next week. That's how the upper air temperature will get to day ten. Quite cool in the far north, otherwise relatively mild or warm across most parts. States hot in these southern states such as Texas and uh, going back in towards the southwest. Let's have a look at CFS V2. These are 500 millibar heights breaking down to wheat peers. The first wheat peer takes us from the 30th of March to the 5th of April. The coming week we'll have a ridge off the east coast and down in the southwest. This will be a warm ridge down here, of course. Um, jet stream can be doing something a little bit like that. So it brings the coldest temperatures into these uh, eastern and uh, southeastern parts of America. Week two is going to be the 6th to 12th of April, a trough low pressure off the west coast, probably bringing cooler temperatures there. Uh, otherwise, uh, a ridge building through these east and northeast states should start to draw up something a little bit milder or warmer from the south. Week three uh, looks like this. It's the 13th to the 19th of April, uh, ridge of high pressure in the north, trough low pressure in the south. And then we get through to week uh, four. We just have a large ridge of high pressure take over across the whole of America, really. 20th, 26th of April sees a ridge uh, building through many parts of states. Temperature anomalies in week one. 30th of March to the uh, 5th of April. Colder than average in the far uh, east and southeast, or through, mis through Midwest, South, and East and Southeast states. Like but the West and the Northwest actually looking uh, a lot warmer. Uh, week two is a sit through to the uh, 12th of April. Cold and average on the West Coast. Otherwise, most parts of America, large bulk of the states, looking at uh, mild average, especially so through Midwest and into the East and the Northeast. Uh, week three uh, is the 13th to the 19th of April. So uh, warm and average through those northern states, so a little bit cooler than average through the southern states. And uh, week four goes warm and average through all parts of America, right way from the west coast all the way over to the east coast, uh, above average temperatures in week four. Precipitation-wise, uh, the coming week is going to be relatively dry uh, across most parts of America. There could be some snow with that northerly blast in the next couple of days, 
but uh, largely dry. It doesn't look like that Miss Norwood is going to spark off too much in the way of thunderstorms uh, once it hits the warmer area in the uh, southeastern part of America. But I will still be watching out for the chance of some storms being generated in the next day or so in the southeast by the instability of this uh, normally blast. Week two is a sit through to the 12th of April, driving average in the east and the northeast, a little bit wet and average through these uh, southern states, uh, otherwise varying from uh, state to state, really. Uh, week three is going to be the 13th to the 19th of April, driving average through many uh, central, east and northern states, a little bit wet and average perhaps out in the west. And then uh, week four is the 20th, 26th of April. Most parts of America looking dry, though. Uh, the northern, northeast and midwestern states uh, might be a little bit more unsettled there. But largely, it's quite a dry scene through particularly the southern and southeastern states. Nothing overly dramatic really showing up there. Uh, once we get this last, or potentially last, northerly blast out of the way, it looks like we may well start to progress then into uh, spring. But, of course, we shall see. Uh, about that. Right, that's it for the USA forecast this week. If you enjoyed it, please smash the like button. Let us know in the comments what you think about this. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We'll be back later on with a 10 to 14 day update for the UK and for Northern Europe as well. So check that out later on. Uh, and check out all of today's uh, uploads that we've released so far as well. Thanks so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, we'll be back later on. Uh, that's all for now, both USA forecast. Thanks for watching.